figured I'd show you guys the latest project I'm working on. Uh, everything is properly mounted on a board now. It's portable. Uh, the ringer is powering up a 40 watt light bulb. No problem. 40 watt light bulb is being run off the ringer. No problem. The load is impedance matched to the capacitor bank that's rapidly recharged by the high frequency from the ringer. We still maintain excess charge in our capacitor bank, 104.4. Um, that is our input drain to the circuit, virtually nothing. Input super cap, I put them next to each other, I didn't really have room anywhere else. This is the input cap that runs the system, passes through an amp meter. Powers up the ringer, the super high frequency is turned to DC, rapidly charges a capacitor bank, um, that's the correct way to use it. I got this special um, box here that will take that 100 volts DC, in this case 105 volts DC, step it down to 14 volts, and it silently pulse discharges it um, into the super cap that then powers up an inverter and runs your load and if everything is impedance matched you can run a 30 to 40 watt load with no drain on the system and the excess power comes from the wireless power of the system and the pulse discharging love this thing much better a lot more simple than <clears throat> the uh, old timing circuits I was using more powerful too you plug a USB into it you can program it from a computer um, again, I got this thing off Amazon. Very handy. So, give you a step back, let you see it. And if I were to connect m more than a 40 watt load here, we would drain that capacitor bank because we would screw up the impedance matching of the system. And um, we would then start to draw more input as we have to, as it fights to charge that capacitor bank. And the system still does give off small amounts of wireless power. This wire I wrapped around the system is just an antenna wire designed to collect ambient energy when the system's oscillating. <coughs> um, and if I were to connect this wire, the antenna wire, to a ground connection or to the negative of my super cap, the uh, single discharge oscillations from the capacitor will cause more wireless power to be present as you can see this bright lights kinda of drowning it out and this board as it stands is self-sustaining you then take this output um, the more efficient way to use it is to take that DC output not power up the inverter power up a very efficient DC to DC boost converter like 14 volts recharge big batteries or another battery system and then run an inverter so but there is still so much of a gain in power in the system from the wireless energy I harvested that I could still use a DC charger powered off the inverter to re-energize the input. And if you ask ChatGPT if this is possible, it'll tell you it absolutely is. So, that's that. Very getting, Things are getting very exciting. Again, I upgraded the rod to a Type 77. Uh, mech glass laced ferrite rod that's creating the excess power generation it sucks in excess power from the ambient environment um, I'm also harnessing I put a full bridge rectifier off this wireless receiver coil here which is an antenna that's harvesting excess power when the system is in oscillation and we can see that power present if I do this This coil is not connected physically to the ringer in any way. It's all wireless induction occurring. Absolutely amazing. And in theory, I could get this to charge even quicker. I could bring in another wireless receiver coil right here, hook up a mini full bridge efficient rectifier composed of those diodes, and combine the output with my cat bank and it would uh, recharge even quicker so now I will demonstrate what happens when I connect 
too large of a load to the system. I will begin to drain it. Um, so for this, I think I'm going to connect this very bright heat bulb. I'm trying to do all this one-handed. And I don't know how I'm going to disconnect this one-handed. It might not happen, but uh, you might just have to take my word for it. The cap bank will drain. I don't want to pause or cut anything. And again, here's the system. Running a 40 watt bulb, no problem. Hopefully you can see the watt rating on it. We're at a full 40 watts. Here's our output. Oh, it helps if you actually plug it into the watt meter. I was doing a lot of experimenting. So, it's actually at 36 watt output. Very interesting. Again, there's our voltage in the caps. Um, everything is just about portable. I just have to put mount the inverter on the board in a clean way. So this is a breakthrough. We have so much excess power being sucked in from the environment. We still have radiant energy present. The ringer core, when it runs silent, you know you're absolutely efficient because you didn't saturate the core. And it runs silent, it won't ring. So, again, there's our input draw. Virtually nothing. 100 milliamps on the input. And in case you don't believe me, I will connect up the uh, halogen bulb, which will be too much power. And it will drain the system. So... In fact, I will hook up the halogen bulb in addition to the 40 watt bulb. And we will see it drain. We will see the capacitor bank drain. I just don't want to put it on the wood because it will smoke. Alright, here we go. Get ready. Okay, and now we hear it ringing, we are drawing power. We are out of resonance, and we drained our capacitor bank. Incorrect way to use the system. Has to be impedance matched. We'll disconnect the large load. Input now drops to virtually nothing, and our cap bank recharges while running the 35 watt load. And again, I'll demonstrate that again. I just don't want to blow my transistor. It shouldn't blow. So I'll hook up that 200 watt halogen um, in addition. Circuit is detuned. We are drawing power on the input. You can hear the ringing. Hopefully you can hear that ringing. Uh, we got smoke. I'm going to have to disconnect that in a minute. Cap bank has drained. We are not impedance matched anymore. We will still have wireless power present though. But we are not using the system the right way because the load is not impedance matched. Disconnect. Input drops to virtually nothing again. Slowly. And our cap bank builds a charge while running a 35 to 40 watt load. So I'll disconnect that bright halogen. And again, you would use this output to recharge a large battery. A large solar battery or a large LIFE PO4 battery or a large solar battery that then powers up an inverter runs whatever you want because this system is scavenging and harnessing excess energy from the environment when the ringer oscillates. And again, there's the wireless power. Here's what happens if I take my messy ground connection. Well, it's not that messy, but it connects to my heater. <clears throat> you can You can do this. Look how bright that gets. I could run a rectifier from a ground connection to the negative of my super cap. And again, that's even more free power for us to play with. This Doing this, this power output puts no strain or drain on the input. I could put a rectifier here instead of this light. 
have that power go to the cap bank and recharge it even quicker. And certain there's certain hot spots in the circuit where the energy focuses where the light will get the brightest. So and again, that's a ground connection. I'll bring in my most sensitive resonant receiver coil just nearby and launch this. Lights, no problem. Again, that's more free power for us to play with that I could scavenge from the circuit as it oscillates. So, I want to keep this video under 11 minutes. Again, that's the ringer. It's full potential. Um, it can be used as an off-grid power source. It's fully self-sustaining. There's our input drain. Virtually nothing. And I showed you what happens when we run too big of a load. We detune it. It rings. And to sum it up, this super cap goes through an amp meter, powers up the ringer circuit. Ringer circuit is a super dual ringer 3.0 circuit, first invented by Laser Hacker or Laser Saber about 10 years ago. The only thing is technology improved and we were able to make it even better because it's wound on a Type 77, now I upgraded, Type 77 uh, Nano, no, Type 77 Met glass laced ferrite rod. It's kind of a mouthful. And the Met glass is what does the magic. This is my most sensitive antenna receiver coil, wirelessly receiving power from the ringer without draining the input somehow, and it gives us a radiant energy. Um, we harness the back EMF from that with a rectifier. Charges our super cap bank. Um, the rectifier here is composed of 1N5822 diodes. I had to put two in series to get 100 volts DC. The high frequency rapidly recharges your caps at virtually no input drain, giving you more power output over time. You then take that 100 volts DC, step it down via this fancy handy little box you can plug a USB into and program. And this guy is silent. He switches silently with a special transistor. Steps down the 100 volts DC to 14 volts DC and pulse discharges into your other super cap that can then run a load. Um, when you run loads it'll also keep the super cap fully charged if you impedance match it. So right now this system can output about 35 to 40 watts without draining the super cap that's powering the inverter because of those pulses and it will actually ac accumulate a charge instead of draining while running the correct load which in this case is 35 to 40 watts and it could probably be slightly more if I used brought in more of my energy collecting circuitry because while this thing is oscillating it uh, it seems to stimulate energy out of the environment which is crazy so this is the most handy detector light and again portable generator unit haven't hooked this thing up to power since it was built. Um, it's more clean now, more stable. Again, there's our cap bank. This multimeter connects to our capacitors. Still accumulating a charge. Virtually no input drain on the source. Give you a good view around things. This is the inverter that runs it. I'll pick it up. The cord somehow is pinched. There we go. I don't want to short anything out. So. That's that. Outputting 37 watts. Our output is 37.1 watts. And that's our input. Input, output, undeniable, unarguable. Excess power comes from the stimulation of the energy in the environment and our radiant energy. You can light up as many of these LEDs as you want when you ground them and it will not place a strain on your input. There's our charge in the cap bank that's being stepped down to 14 volts. That's then keeping our super cap charge that's running the inverter and powering the bulb. So, 
Very impressive. That was hot. Very impressive. Again, <clears throat> 14 volt input cap. Goes through the amp meter. Powers up the ringer circuit. Hyper efficient on our met glass laced ferrite rod type 77. High frequency rapidly charges our caps. I optimize it even more by capturing the back EMF from this wireless antenna coil. That power also helps to charge our caps quicker. Goes through that converter board. We charge up those caps to 100 volts DC. Um, this guy steps it down to 14 volts. Silently pulse discharges it into our other super cap, 14 volts. That then powers up a 120 or 240 volt AC inverter to run a 40 watt load, 35 to 40 watt load of excess power that we accumulate. And you can use this power to recharge large off-grid batteries hyper efficiently to then reach to then run whatever you want <clears throat> and uh, be off-grid, do whatever you want. So that's the correct way to use it. If you want it to be even more efficient, you wouldn't use the inverter when recharging your big battery. You would use a DC to DC boost. Oh, I'm sorry. You would just come off this 14 volt DC connection and charge your big battery directly off this box. So again, here's the box. Radiant energy seems to really be focused on the metal. And this video is going on way too long. It was supposed to be a sales advertisement video. But uh, you get the idea. That's the ringer. And you skeptics out there think there's something under the table. There's an absolutely nothing. The board is completely portable. I can lift it up. Do whatever I want. There's nothing underneath the board. This thing is completely portable. So, that's that. Um, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I sell the ringer circuit for 150 bucks. Uh, the capacitor, the, the capacitors and everything else are sold separately. You just get a ringer circuit that can run off of a 14 volt DC source that can hyper efficiently, once rectified, charge up DC capacitors and run loads. So, I'm showing you the full potentials of it and how amazing it is. I'll shut the inverter off and we will see our caps charge up even quicker with uh, still virtually no input drain to the system. So that's that and it's getting amazing. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, uh, join the Patreon even if it's for free. There's an archive of electrical knowledge there all free to access in one spot. Um, and if you want to order, all orders are placed through my email mtechindustries2022 at gmail.com. 120 bucks a ringer. So and again, thank you everybody.